I'm Pascal with Art of Adventure. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm at Blue Springs State Park. It's known for a lot of things, but what I want to talk about today is its natural lazy river. In fact, let's go through my top five lazy rivers in the state of Florida. Number five, you might have guessed it, Blue Springs State Park. First, there are a lot of Blue Springs in Florida, so let me be specific. I'm talking about Blue Springs State Park in Orange City. That's about 30 minutes from Daytona Beach. What's not to love about Blue Spring? 72 degree water year round. You can scuba, snorkel, or just swim right there at the spring head. On any given day, there's a good chance you'll even see a manatee, or two, or three. I think you get it. On this day, volunteers were watching closely over a two-day-old manatee calf as she followed her mom and siblings up and down the spring run. Volunteers are there to make sure everyone shows respect for the manatee's habitat. But let's get back to that lazy river. It's not a super long float from beginning to end, which is why it only comes in at number five on my list. There's a well-maintained boardwalk that takes you from the parking lots to the upper entry. That's the closest entry to the spring head itself. If you want to swim to the spring head, you'll have to enter the water here and head upstream. The current is strong, so be prepared to swim against it. I do recommend grabbing your mask and snorkel and at least checking it out. If you just want to float, you can do that too. You still put in at the upper entry. The water is relatively shallow there, only a few feet it's a little rocky, so you may want to wear those water shoes. The current is swift, so be prepared to hop on your tuber raft and start the float right away. The spring run is only an eighth of a mile, so the float itself is only about 15 minutes, if that. Just relax and take in the scenery. Enjoy your time on the water. This is Florida, and it is beautiful. You can exit with your tube at the main swim dock and do it all over again. I suggest you bring your own tubes. They don't have a fill station. I brought a bike pump. Let's just say it took a minute. Don't have a tube or a pump? No worries. You can also rent from the Blue Springs Adventures right there on the property. Okay, here are some pro tips for Blue Springs State Park. It's a Florida State Park, so it's just six bucks per car to get in. The park opens at 8 a.m., and in the summer months, you should be in the line of cars by then. This park frequently reaches capacity. Things are a little busier on the weekends than the weekdays. If I were you, I'd go on the weekday. Blue Spring is also a manatee refuge. In the winter months, manatees head for Florida's warmer waters. The spring run is off-limits to all water-related activities between mid-November and March. It's still worth visiting though, because you will see plenty of manatees. Some years there have been more than 400 manatees tracked at Blue Spring State Park. How cool! Leash pets are allowed in the park, but not near or on the water. Parking is easy. Don't worry if you're forced to park deeper in the lot. It actually hugs the water, so you'll be pretty close to the boardwalk no matter where you park. The gift shop, food service, camp store, and water activities rental station are seasonal. You can find them there in the main swimming area. Here's another good one. Since the current always takes you back to the main swimming area, don't take items to the upper entry you don't want to put in the water. Why fight the current to get the things you left on the boardwalk and then go for a long hike back when you can just swim or float back to your setup near the parking lot? If you want to do more than swim and float, you can also check out the ecological river cruises or get a guided kayak or canoe tour. Number four, Jenny Springs. Jenny Springs is a privately owned park in Gilchrist County near High Springs, Florida. It sits on the south side of the Santa Fe River. You can find seven different springs on the property. The largest is Jenny. There are many ways to experience the park. 
and tubing along the Santa Fe is certainly a popular choice. Prepare to walk a bit to get the full tubing experience. You'll probably want something on your feet. There's an unpaved tube trail that winds through the park. Just follow the yellow signs tacked to the trees along the route. Most people put their tubes in the water at the Beaver's Landing access point. There are steps to make things easy for you and your family. Expect some current, so try to get in at the same time so you can stay together. Some people tie their rafts together. The float along the Santa Fe is really great. If you want to chill and relax, just sit back and go along for the ride. If you want a little something more exciting, you can try your hand at one of these rope swings you can find along the route. Yep. The trees are big and the roots are slippery, so just be careful. One of the things I really like about tubing Jenny is choosing the length of the run. If you launch at Beaver's Landing, you will pass Devil's Eye, Jenny Springs, Dogwood, Deer and Twin. You can pull into any one of those if you're ready to get out of the water. If you do float all the way to the tube exit point at Twin Spring, you can expect to be on the water about an hour altogether. Once you exit, it's a 15 minute walk back to the Jenny Spring parking lot. If you wanna walk from there right back to Beaver's Landing, expect to be on your feet another 15 minutes. If you get to the park early enough, you should be able to snag a picnic table. You will wanna bring your own grill if you wanna cook out. There are some on the property, but why risk it? One word of warning, since Jenny is private, this is one of the few springs where alcohol is allowed, and I promise you, it will be obvious at times. It can get downright rowdy on the water and throughout the campgrounds. Here are a few more pro tips for your trip to Jenny Springs. Jenny is one of the pricier springs in Florida, so expect to pay up. In the summer, an adult day pass will cost you $20. It's five bucks for kids between five and 12, children under four are free. You can rent tubes right there in the park or bring your own. The general store also sells some tubes and rafts. Oh, there's a free air station right next to the general store. Use it. I can't tell you how many times I see people huffing and puffing to fill their rafts. Save those breaths for the hooping and hollering on the Santa Fe. Jenny Springs has a strict no pet policy, service animals only, there is a general store and grill. The food's pretty good too. But don't forget to pack a picnic of your own if you plan to be there late. The grill usually closes at three o'clock. I think they won this one. What is that? <laughs> Here's something you don't hear often. There's Wi-Fi. But you have to be sitting on the porch of the general store for it to work. Just put your phones away. And here's another perk. Most of the bathhouses do have showers. Number three, Rock Springs at Kelly Park. If you're no stranger to my channel, you know I'm a big fan of Rock Springs. It recently made my top five list for family-friendly springs. Rock Springs is in Apopka, just outside of Orlando, and it has a one-of-a-kind lazy river. The Rock Springs run starts with this beautiful rock formation. Most people enter the water right there at the spring head. There are a lot of jagged rocks close to the surface, so be careful. If you have a tube, it may be easier to enter on the other side of the little wooden bridge. Rock Springs is popular, so be ready to share the spring run. Between the tubers, the snorkelers, and the swimmers, it may feel a little like bumper cars at times. The Lazy River is only a few feet deep and about three-fourths of a mile long. There is a strong current, so you can float the entire run in just about 20 minutes. The Rock Springs run opens up into several large but shallow pools of water. Great for kids to splash around. You can also stay on your raft and float a little bit farther. Eventually, Kelly Park ends and another park begins. This is where tubers will have to get out of the water and start a short 10 minute walk back to the main part of the park. Here are my pro tips for Rock Springs at Kelly Park. Arrive early. This park reaches capacity daily. If I were you, I would be in line of cars before seven or eight a.m. I would also avoid the weekend rush. 
If they do reach capacity early, ask for an afternoon voucher. The park allows another 50 cars in starting at 1 p.m. Not a lot of people know about that. Rock Springs is obviously popular because it's beautiful and family friendly, but it's also popular because of the price. Only three to five dollars a car depending on how many people are with you. You really can't beat that. You cannot rent tubes inside the park. I repeat, you cannot rent tubes inside the park. I suggest you bring your own, or you can always rent from one of the vendors outside the park. They are also very strict about the size of tubes. The run is not very wide, so stick with a standard size tube to be safe. There are lifeguards at Rock Springs, which is pretty rare for a Florida spring. And you may want to wear your water shoes. The tube run is shallow and rocky in a lot of places. Number two, Rainbow River. Rainbow River is in Denellen, Florida, just outside of Ocala. In my opinion, this river is the most beautiful in the entire state. The river floor is mostly made up of sand and grass, and from a bird's eye view, it's just breathtaking. You can see every single shade of blue. Rainbow River is almost six miles long. Rainbow Springs is the anchor for Rainbow Springs State Park. So let's talk about that lazy river. There are a couple different ways to experience the float. For a shorter ride, you'll want to start at the State Park Tubing Facility. For $20, a tram will take you and your rental tube to a spot along the river. You'll spend about an hour and a half on the water. Entry into the park itself costs $2 per person. I do want to mention though, the park is popular partly because of this beautiful swimming area at the Springhead. It does reach capacity often. So if you want to go this route, get there early. Another way to float the Rainbow River is by starting at KP Hole Park. First, you have to go to the ticket window and tell them what you want to do. Most people will rent a tube or kayak and pay to ride the shuttle back. The park itself is nice and clean. There's a walkway that allows you to get your tube into the water easily. This is cool. If you have your own kayak or stand-up paddle, you can actually drive it down to the water and then go park. For someone who paddles a lot, that's a nice perk. It's a decent walk back from the parking lot and that pavement is hot, so you will probably want some sort of shoes or sandals. On a kayak or stand-up paddle, I recommend going left upstream from the park. You can make it to Rainbow Springs in about 45 minutes to an hour. What is so beautiful? Then just drift back with the current to KP Hole when you're ready. On the way back, make sure you take time to get in the water. Bring a mask to see all the beauty below the surface. If you go that route, there is no need to pay for a shuttle. Now, if you're tubing, just jump in at KP Hole and head downstream. Enjoy the nice long ride. This run is between three and a half and four hours depending on the water levels. Just relax and take it all in. I talked to people who said they even took a nap or two on the float. Now you don't get more relaxed than that. Again, bring your mask and snorkel. You may even get to see one of the nosy otters along the way. Eventually, you'll make it to Blue Run Park. That's where you'll get out of the water with your tube and then wait for a shuttle back to KP Hole, where you're parked. The length of the run, the clear, calm river, and the wildlife are all reasons this ranks so high on my list of top lazy rivers in Florida. Here are a few pro tips. The tubing package at KP Hole costs $25 per person. It may seem like a lot, but I think it's worth it. That includes entry to the park with all the amenities, the tube rental, a four hour ride, and the return shuttle. I mean, you can't even get an Uber for that price. It's important to note, personal tubes are not allowed at KP Hole. And the tubing season only runs from April 1st to September 30th. 
You can bring a small cooler, and you will want one for a four-hour float. But you can't bring any disposable items. They will check your cooler before you get in the water. And if you sneak something through and you're caught with it on the river, you can get a fine. I think someone should have gotten a fine for letting their mask make it to the river. Don't worry, I picked it up. Oh, and make sure you stop at Swampy's Bar and Grill afterwards. It has the best view in the city, and I always meet amazing people there. Okay, drum roll. My number one choice for a natural lazy river in Florida is Itchituckney Springs. I know, I know. I've covered a lot of great lazy rivers so far. But when you compare the price, the location, the amenities, the fact you can bring your own tubes and float the river over and over, I just don't think you can beat it. Itchituckney Springs is a state park about 30 miles southwest of Lake City. It's only six bucks per car for entry. You can bring your own tube or rent one starting at six bucks. I do recommend paying the $5.50 to ride the tram. You'll get a wristband so you can ride all day long. The tram will also ensure more time on the water and less time walking around dragging those bulky tubes. Another reason Itchituckney is number one on my list is because it's easy to choose the float time that works best for you and your family. If you're looking for a 25 minute float, take the tram to the midpoint launch and get out at Dampier's Landing. Dampier is a short walk back to the general store and main parking area. You could also choose a 45 minute run starting at Dampier's Landing and getting out at the south exit point. Or you could decide to stay on the water an hour and 15 minutes, start at the midpoint launch and stay on your floats all the way to the south exit point. Times for these runs can vary based on the water levels. I've also been on this river with smaller kids, and I know they get colder quicker, so it's nice to have various entry and exit points to help cater to them. The float itself is awesome. Although it may not feel like it, you really don't have to do any steering at all. Just go with the flow. Here are a few more pro tips for the Lazy River at Itchituckney. Your comfort on the water starts with the raft you choose. Look at all the options. Tubes with a bottom will help you secure loose items like a mask and snorkel. You might want a bigger raft with a headrest if you just want to lay back and chill. The difference is really just a couple bucks, so in my opinion, this is not the place to skip. Make sure your time on the water is relaxing and enjoyable. You deserve it. Speaking of mask and snorkel, bring them. On this day the water was a little cloudier than usual because of the recent storms, but you can still catch some pretty cool fish and after a while in the sun the water really feels refreshing. Make sure you keep your eyes open for the turtles that line the banks on the river. Just after you pass Dampier's Landing, get your camera ready. The cliffs and caves that line the right bank are gorgeous. And yes, they look funny, but bring your water shoes. Even with a tram drop off, you'll have to do some off-roading. One last thing, for GPS purposes, make sure you get directions to Itchituckney South Entrance if you want the tube run. The North Entrance will take you to the Spring Head. Itchituckney really has everything you want in a lazy river and everything you need in a state park. That's why it's number one on my list of lazy rivers in Florida. As always, you will want to call ahead and make sure the park you're interested in is open and the amenities you want are available. After all, it is Florida and we do have storms. How'd I do? Did I forget one of your lazy rivers in the state of Florida? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and consider a subscription. Remember, Experiences make up the art of adventure. Go get it!